Hey there, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. Some recent articles that have been published have amassed a little side body of research on willpower. So in this vlog, I want to revisit willpower. And thank you to Bright Lifer and for sending me one of these articles in a private message and suggesting that I shoot a vlog on it. High time, great topic. Okay, so when I first came across this research, I have to be honest, I was distressed. I was like, oh no, what does this mean about what I've been teaching people about willpower? And I'm so glad that Anne gave me the nudge to shoot a vlog on this because it really prompted me to think deeply about it. And the truth is that there's a really good way to integrate this latest body of research into what we do and what we believe here at Brightline Eating. So in essence, here's the finding. Researchers have found that whether or not you experience willpower depletion or the degree to which you experience it has everything to do with your mindset and what you believe about willpower. So a study in psychological science uh, showed that people who have a limited belief about willpower, in other words, they believe what we teach here on Bright Line Eating, which is that willpower is a limited resource, it gets fatigued, and after it gets depleted, you need to replenish it. People who believe that experience willpower depletion. People who don't believe that, who believe that willpower is not limited. As a matter of fact, uh, it's possible that uh, by uh, stressing your willpower and overcoming temptations, you bolster your willpower and you've got more of it. This sort of non-limited belief about willpower, they tend not to experience willpower depletion, at least not as much, sometimes not at all. There was another study in Frontiers in Psychology showing that people who had a very demanding, strenuous day, a willpower depleting day, one day, the next day had uh, even greater expectations for themselves, more striving, uh, and so forth. So like they didn't show depletion effects from their demanding day. Uh, in other words, maybe they don't experience PECs, that post-event collapse syndrome kind of thing. So yeah, I was sort of like, God, what does this mean? Am I even harming people by teaching them that willpower is depleting? So this is such an interesting topic, right? Couple things about this research. First of all, Upon close examination, it's not that surprising, right? What we believe is very impactful. Think about the placebo effect. I mean, a classic Japanese study decades and decades and decades ago looked at people who were blindfolded, who were highly allergic to a certain plant, and researchers rubbed that plant up and down one of their uh, forearms, but said, this is some other plant, some innocuous, harmless plant, right? And then uh, rubbed an innocuous plant up, up and down their other forearm and said, this is the plant that you're really, really, really allergic to, right? And people on average developed a rash on the arm that they believed had been in contact with the allergy producing plant as opposed to where they'd actually been in contact with the allergy producing plant. Meaning that our beliefs and expectations can alter our physical reality so much that they can transfer an allergy from one arm to the other. Now, does this mean allergies don't exist? No, that's not what it means. It means that the mind is very, very powerful, right? And so all of the places where we see the placebo effect, where we see expe expectations moderating and modulating physical realities in terms of health and wellness are in play here. And here's one more. It matters what you believe about willpower. Well, it matters what you believe about most things. So that's one thing. Another thing I just wanna say about this research is correlation does not prove causation. So what hasn't been accounted for yet in this uh, body of research is perhaps there are individual differences going in, uh, underlying in people and how willpower works in their brain and people who aren't particularly 
vulnerable to willpower depletion effects have, shockingly enough, developed expectations that willpower is not a limited resource. And so shockingly, unsho not particularly shockingly, they don't demonstrate those effects. Whereas maybe some people, due to individual differences, uh, experience a lot of willpower depletion and they have consequently developed a more limited belief about willpower, that it's limiting and that it's finite and that it's gonna get exhausted because for them it does, right? So it could be actually that physical differences in brains are underlying these findings and these expectations. That could explain this phenomenon as well. That hasn't been sorted out by this research. Okay, but I think given how strong the placebo effect is, which is incredibly strong, given that, I think it's fair to say that expectations are probably moderating and modulating these effects. Okay, so what does this mean for our Bright Line Eating journey? Well, I wanna take a step back here because what we use willpower research for in Bright Line Eating is still apropos. We use it to convince ourselves to develop habits so that we don't rely so much on willpower. We're always going to have to use some amount of willpower, right? Like NMF and NMD, which if you're new around here, that stands for not my food and not my drink, right? Could be sugar and flour, could be alcohol, could be just a bite of food that's not happening right now because it's not mealtime, right? It's not for you right now, right? Is going to crop up at any given time. It just will in our environment, right? We're going to need to use willpower, but we're going to be in a much better position to have a bright day if we have planned in advance, if we have done some food prep, if we have habits in place of writing down our food the night before, of packing our lunch and bringing it when we leave the house, uh, of doing some food prep, uh, on the weekends or at a time when we can and having salad chopped veggies ready to go to throw into a bowl at the end of a long day. Here's what research shows. Research shows that the most productive, most successful people use the least willpower of anybody. And the reason is that they don't rely on willpower. They have habits. They have really, really good habits and lots of them that support them in being highly productive and highly successful human beings, right? And that reality is still in play. So what we use research on willpower depletion for around here is still in effect, which is we need habits and automaticity as our undergirding, as our scaffolding, as our foundation in life, in bright line eating. But then, I think it's really, really good news to hear that we can recognize that we got gas in the tank. We always have gas in the tank. Willpower depletion is not a fait accompli. It's not a guarantee. And it mind over matter, if we believe we can get through the day bright, we can. And that is good to know, my friend. That is good to know. So all in all, I think this research is really interesting, really helpful. And again, thank you, Anne, for the topic. Uh, and it's good to revisit these topics every now and then. Science marches on, research marches on. There's always more to learn, always more to discover. And that is Willpower Revisited. That's the weekly vlog. I'll see you next week.